how much better is the world if we respond sometimes to humor as opposed to outrage? And Rush certainly knew that as well or better than anyone. Uh, here's Fox News, Sandra Smith, Bill Hemmer, remembering Rush this morning. And then we've got a great clip to play for you for the start of the third hour. But listen to this. Today marks two years since the death of Rush Limbaugh, the hugely influential conservative talk radio icon, launched the Rush Limbaugh show back in 1988. It became the most listened to radio show in the country. He was also a best-selling author and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2020. Limbaugh died in 2021 after a year-long battle with advanced lung cancer. He was 70 years old. Well, well, it's hard uh, to believe that time has passed. Exactly right about that. I remember me landing in Iowa for the caucus for mm. the Democrats, and uh, we got the alert that Limbaugh had lung cancer. And that was the first that, you know, we had all known about that. So Russia is remembered again today. Remember, yeah. Bill Hemmer, Sondra Smith, they are discussing that this morning on Fox News. Both of them are fantastic. And you all know that Rush was fantastic and his legacy continues to live on every single day in every single one of your hearts and mine. <laughs> I haven't really talked a great deal, I don't think either Buck or I have, uh, on this show about Rush's legacy and how we came to come together on this show. So I thought on the two-year anniversary of Rush Limbaugh's death, I'd tell you a little bit behind the scenes of, of how I ended up on this program. So she doesn't get enough credit, and she tries to hide behind the scenes. But Julie Talbot, who is our boss at Premier and was Rush's boss at Premier Networks, is one of the most talented people to ever work in radio. And she's probably blushing right now, and she's like, oh, my dear, what in the world? Don't talk about me. She put Buck and I together, but she also was instrumental in all of the success that Rush Limbaugh had for many years as part of Premier and iHeart. And when Rush died... Julie came to me and she said, no one's ever going to replace Rush. And that's true. When you are an iconic original, there is never going to be a replacement. But she said, you've been doing sports talk radio morning, blowing up all over the country from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern. Some of you may be listening to me now because you used to listen to that show. And when sports shut down, in March, April, May, and June of 2020, there were literally no sports. I came on every day and did three hours of sports talk radio to a large degree that was focused on the fact that we had to return to normalcy in this country. I didn't take a single day off because I felt like there was so much chaos and uncertainty out there that it was important for there to be some consistency and I know that a lot of you still had to work. Many of you out there driving trucks right now, you're actual essential workers. To me, if you didn't have to work, that is a sign that your job in the grand scheme of things didn't matter that much to many people. If you're stocking grocery shelves, you had to work. You worked at a gas station, you had to work. Many of you out there that are the heartbeat of American commerce and keep this country running didn't have the luxury of going and hiding inside of your apartments or homes and ordering food takeout delivery and sitting around getting full paychecks watching Netflix while you lectured everybody else who was out there actually making sure that the country kept running. Police. Firemen. So many of you out there had to keep working. And so I kept doing my show and something crazy happened. The number of people listening skyrocketed. Wasn't a single sporting event going on. There was nothing to react to. Nobody to say, oh my goodness, did you see that officiating call? This guy has to be fired. This guy has to be hired. Give this player a max contract. None of that was going on. Numbers kept going up. Julie came to me and she said, people don't want your sports opinion. They want your opinion. And the impact that Rush had is so massive that you can't say no to this opportunity to be put alongside of Buck Sexton. I didn't seek this job. 
I, I'm, I'm maybe a little bit unique in the context of there's never been a job out there where when I started writing and talking as a practicing attorney, I never thought, oh my goodness, I hope one day I can have this job or that job. I just, I never was trying to take over uh, any job or try to aspire to take any job. I just wanted to get better at writing radio and TV. And so when this opportunity came, I spent a lot of time sitting around thinking about it. And you guys know that I love sports and I fought hard to try to make sports and American culture look more like sports because I believe in capitalism and the meritocracy and the best man or best woman winning and competition in general in the innate, extraordinary nature of American freedom and life. And the more and more I thought about it, as a dad, things change, right? And I know many of you out there who are parents and grandparents know what, I talk, uh, what I'm talking about. But you reach a point in your life, and it's different for everybody, where you start thinking more about what the future is going to be for your kids than what the present day is for you. And that pivot happens at different ages for different people. But COVID was a massive alarm bell for me. Where I looked around at my kids, who are still all three young boys, and thought to myself, my goodness, what world are we leaving for them? Where suddenly you have to worry not about tax policy, right? We can sit around and have reasoned arguments about what the top 1% tax rate should be. And we can have reasoned arguments about what percentage of our national uh, budget every year should be directed towards Medicare and Social Security and defense. But what we can argue about, and what unfortunately has become an argument, is the innate goodness of this country and of the people here. And of the fact that this is the greatest country to ever exist in the history of the world. And when the argument shifts from, oh, I think it should be a 42% tax, or I think it should be a 28% tax on corporate profits or individual tax codes, to America's a fundamentally awful racist place, and therefore nothing in American history is legitimate or worth discussing or celebrating, that's a big difference because when you attack the foundation of American excellence, you're attempting to destroy the country and you are no longer a rational, reasonable political foe. You are a destructor hell bent on destroying everything that this country was founded on. I was thinking about that a lot when I decided to come over here and start spending three hours every day with you guys. Buck was already in this battle. But for me, I'd always been in the toy chest of life. Sports. Things that people like. And I couldn't continue to see the country that I loved denigrated and attacked and destroyed on a day-to-day -day basis by forces, frankly, that I think are absolutely insane. And I certainly couldn't, in good faith, as a father of three think to myself, what are you going to say when you're 75 and you're a grandpa 30 years from now if the country continues on the course that it's on right now? That you sat around and talked about who the best quarterback was in the NFL and that's your legacy? That you talked about whether Michael Jordan or LeBron James was better and that's what you spent your time making arguments about? I just couldn't do it anymore. And Julie Talbot, when she brought Buck and I together, said, I didn't want one person to sit behind the golden microphone because you'd immediately be compared to Rush. And that, no matter who you are, is a legacy it's very hard to even comprehend, much less live up to. And so the show was going to sound different, but the battles would be the same. And two years after Rush's passing, as we started off this third hour on this anniversary day that many of you are holding in your hearts, I thought, let's play a clip that is particularly apropos, that is timeless, and that speaks to 
the unique and brilliant freedoms of American life and why this country that we all live in were so incredibly fortunate to be here. And that is why we picked this clip from November 28th of 2007 from Rush Limbaugh talking about freedom and the greatness of the United States. Listen. The one true and pure ideal this country was started with was the idea of freedom. It has been our North Star for decades upon decades, over centuries. It is the vision that drove men to this country against all odds in the 1500s, and it still does today. It's the reason they fought in the cold with no shoes with Washington at Delaware, it is the it is the the Delaware Rift. The reason we are the one society to get rid of slavery, or the first to do it, uh, the Brits did a pretty good job of it as well. But but the point is, freedom is. You ever asked yourself, and I've asked you this before, how is it that in two hundred and sixty years, less than two hundred and sixty years, a population of three hundred million people has established the single greatest, most powerful force for good nation in the history of civilization versus civilizations and societies and countries that have been around thousands of years longer, the answer uh, in simple form is freedom. It is fundamental. So well said. On the two-year anniversary of his passing, he will never be forgotten. But what Buck and I are trying to do every single day is continue to fight the battles that Rush would be fighting if he were still here and hopefully... My thought is helping to pass that baton on to the next generation. Because I know every single day, many of you out there who listen to Rush for 30 plus years, you might be in your 60s, 70s, 80s year, uh, year old now. And to the extent that I'm 43 and troubled about what I'm seeing, I know that many of you are even more troubled. Well, Buck and I are here to keep the fight going. And we hope that in the years to come, raising up a new generation of fighters who understand the importance and the legacy of American freedom and excellence that Rush has bestowed upon us, that frankly, all of our forefathers have bestowed upon this entire country.